mentioned that warm, boiling ocean water. And for Forbes, you wrote four strange things about the hurricane season already. And you pointed out this Jekyll and Hyde scenario. And obviously, when I heard that, I was like, ooh, that, that doesn't sound good. Because anyone who knows the story of Jekyll and Hyde knows it's a split personality here. Can you speak a little more towards that? Well, what I mean by that is that we have entered an El Nino when the waters in the Central Pacific Ocean are warmer than normal. We've been in a La Nina pattern, a cooler than normal pattern for the last several years. El Nino usually means, on average, less hurricane activity in the Atlantic. I mean, there's a sort of complex connection between the ocean waters and the Pacific and how it affects the atmospheric patterns and jet stream patterns everywhere around the world. But counter to that tendency for El Nino to want to sort of suppress hurricane activity, these warm waters that we've been talking about, Brittany. Uh, and, and again, I use boiling metaphorically, but they're just very warm. And so if hurricanes do form, and they will, uh, I mean, we will get tropical storms and hurricanes forming this year. Uh, they have quite a bit of, of warm water and likely some deeper ocean water that's warm to tap into. And that, from a meteorological perspective, I'm a meteorologist, that always concerns me when hurricanes have this rich pool of warm water. And I've also been looking at some of the steering patterns with the location of the high pressure in the Atlantic is. And right now I'm seeing some things that concern me about even how those storms could move once they form. We Sometimes the position of that, that high can lead to more what I call fish storms. They just go out to the sea. But in some cases, they actually come a bit closer to the U.S. And so I'm watching how that pattern evolves as well. So what you're saying, is this warm water ammunition for these storms? Oh, it's absolutely. Hurricanes feed off of warm water. That's why they typically die when they move inland or even move over cooler waters. Um, if you look at the water temperatures, and I, in, in that article that you mentioned that I wrote, I, I, I actually shared a map from someone, a colleague of mine that tweeted a, a map of the uh, sea surface temperatures around the world. And if you look at those temperatures in what we call the main development region or the MDR, that's that region uh, off the coast of Africa uh, in, into the central part of the Atlantic, we call that the MDR. MDR, the main development region, those waters are really hot. And so uh, that just doesn't bode well if these storms can spin themselves up. You also noted in that piece for Forbes that hurricane season starts June 1. On June 2, we saw a named storm, Tropical Storm Arlene. Is it normal for a storm to form this early in the season? No, it, it's not. It was a little early. And now typically the first named storm comes later in June, probably the third and third week of June. So to get a storm literally the day after uh, hurricane season officially began, uh, that was certainly a bit unusual and even more unusual than that. And I mentioned that in the article as well. Uh, Arlene was the first named storm, but uh, the National Hurricane Center actually characterized the name, uh, 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 identified a subtropical system that happened in January. <laughs> Didn't get a name, but it was designated as the first tropical storm, if you will, or tropical system, I will say, uh, of the year. And that's in January, well outside of the hurricane season. <laughs> So is that more of an anomaly or does this indicate, maybe foreshadow anything about the 2023 season? Yeah, I wouldn't sort of go as far as to say it foreshadows anything, but it's certainly an anomaly, Brittany, to get uh, there. I don't know if many of your viewers may remember a few years back, we had a hurricane and Alex back in January, and there have been a few other instances of tropical activity. Uh, what that says to me, uh, it, it doesn't say necessarily much about what to expect for this season, but what it says to me is that uh, it continues to be a scenario where a hurricane season, quote unquote, may be meaningless because there we are seeing tropical storms now happen before June, for example, and after December, after November 30th, when the season technically ends. And so uh, I have been keeping an eye on and have written in the past in Forbes about whether the concept a hurricane season is obsolete or becoming so. Do you think at one point in the future, maybe the near future, we could see a hurricane season that's really 12 months out of the year? I mean, I think we've kind of already seen it. If you go back and look at the record, we've had hurricanes in January and December. Uh, haven't really had uh, too much going on in February and March. So uh, 
you know, I don't know if it'll be 12 months, but I think one of the things we're increasingly seeing and uh, certainly some evidence of that this year is that because of the warm ocean temperatures in some of the cases, how early it's getting warm, warm enough to support hurricane activity, um, yeah, we can start to see tropical storms at least well before June 1st. Dr. Shepard, I always enjoy having you on. And whenever you come on, you always leave our viewers with a piece of advice. I know you gave some advice at the top, but at the end here, as we wrap, what's that one piece, the most important piece of advice you can leave the viewers as we we start the hurricane season of 2023? Well, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna violate your 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 guidance here. Give two quick ones. One is Perfect. just make make sure to have a, a plan and understand your insurance needs. But the second thing is a little bit more subtle. Don't fall a victim to normalcy bias or recency bias. What I mean by that is don't assume because you uh, made it through a storm five years ago or last year, um, the next storm coming is just like that one. Again, a lot of people in Southwest Florida sort of said, well, Hurricane Ian is like Charlie. I made it through that. No, Hurricane Ian was way bigger storm than Charlie. In fact, much of Hurricane Charlie would have fit in the eye of Hurricane Ian. So don't assume the same storm you're experiencing in 23, 23 is like the storm you've ex experienced in the past. Treat every storm uh, like you treat your kids. They all have their own personalities. That's great advice. So every storm is different. Is that how people should be approaching this hurricane season? We should be approaching it as every storm is different. And in some ways, this newer generation of storms may be exhibiting some behavior that we haven't seen in the past because of those warmer ocean temperatures and sort of shifts that we're seeing in our climate system. Dr. Marshall Shepard, per usual, thank you so much for joining me.